Hi, I'm Alyssa and I'm a graduate student at York University in Toronto, Ontario. Right now I'm in the Mackenzie Delta region of the Canadian Arctic, working with a team of researchers studying fish in lakes along the Dempster and the Inuvik Tuck Highways. We're extremely grateful to be working in two settlement regions, including the Inuvialuit settlement region in the north and the Gwich'in settlement area in the south. The Mackenzie Delta is a unique region of the Arctic, both ecologically and culturally. Warmer waters flowing from the south create a biological oasis for animals that allow them to thrive in this otherwise cold and low nutrient landscape. In the fall of 2017, this region made Canadian history by becoming home to Canada's first all-weather highway connection to the Arctic Ocean. The new Inuvik-Tuk Highway is already encouraging thousands of intrepid tourists to flock to this unique corner of our country. Signs of climate change are evident across the Arctic, and the Mackenzie Delta region is no exception. People are reporting observations of new fish species in the Mackenzie River, like salmon, and extensive permafrost melting is causing unusual sightings like ground slumping and even vanishing lakes. Many of the fish that live in this region depend on access to cold water for their survival, making them increasingly vulnerable as the climate warms. Our research focuses on documenting and understanding how sensitive cold water fish species may respond to the combination of warming and increased human stressors following road development. Our work is based out of the Aurora Research Institute in Inuvik, the home base for hundreds of scientists that have worked in the Western Canadian Arctic over many decades. The Institute provides immeasurable support through coordination of logistics, accommodations, and opportunities for local engagement. So let me take you through a day of our project activities. Today we're going to go sampling at Big Lake. Big Lake is a lake that's uh, quite close to Tuktoyaktuk. Um, it's a popular spot for fishing, uh, so there's potentially lake trout in there. And um, it's pretty cold this morning. We have two degrees reading, although it's not as bad as yesterday where there was actually snow. Uh, and some of the vegetation around here is starting to turn color for fall, even though it's only about August 22nd. So now we've arrived at Big Lake. It's really close to the road here. So our next step is just to unload our trucks, all of our gear, and get into the lake and start sampling for the day. This net is being set in really shallow water here. This is a really small lake. And then we'll come back in an hour to check it. We just caught ourselves two northern pike that we're gonna take biometric data for. So I'm just gonna grab this one right here. First thing we do is take its weight. And for large fish like this, we put them in this fish weighing bag. So this one is 0 0.78 kilograms. Fork length is 48.5 centimeters. And we are done getting the data that we need. So all we have left to do is just release it. And this guy looks ready to go. So just put him off and he's off. And that's how we process fish. In addition to live fish sampling, we are also collecting detailed information about the fish age, diet, and health from a small number of incidental mortalities. Overall, our program aims to collect data for 60 lakes over a three year period. As the Mackenzie Delta region is set to experience increasing environmental and socioeconomic changes, our study will provide important information regarding the current aquatic health that can then be used as a benchmark for assessing future changes. We are incredibly privileged to be able to work in such a unique northern area and want to extend our deepest thanks to the Wildlife Conservation Society Canada and the W. Garfield Weston Foundation for allowing us to substantially broaden our sampling program and by providing the opportunity to work with such a fantastic team of people. We are also immensely grateful to our other funders, the Aurora Research Institute, and the local communities who have welcomed us into their land.